What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Namaste, namaskaram, Ram Ram Ji, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new, make sure to subscribe down below. You know, just subscribe down below for you know, good luck and all that. Anyway, let's dive into this video. I'm going to react to the states of India, right? I know there is equality in India and all that, you know, but obviously, you can say this state, you know, is more developed or this state is better than this one. Uh, this video is quite, uh, I think it was done a long time ago, um, but yeah, man, it's still the states of India, they haven't changed, although like, you know, there's a lot of improvement, um, you know, that has been done, building, you know, a lot of stuff, so you can tell me more in the comments section down below, let's dive into the video, let's go states of India. Now the thing about India is that it's actually kind of broken up quite a few times since independence from the original 14 states, mostly because of the people groups or the languages, stuff like that. So before we get into this, just keep in mind, I am not Indian. I have never even been to India. So in order to make this video, I had to talk to a lot of you guys. I've read a lot of your emails and comments and I compiled as much information as I possibly could based off of what you guys, the Indian geography peeps have said. So kind of, you know, if I get anything wrong, it's, you know, kind of your fault. <laughs> so let's just jump into it. The 29 states and the seven union territories. Andhra Pradesh, the capital, Amaravati. Now this is an interesting state because it kind of has like the fastest growing GDP in all of India, over 16% in the past few years. Over here they speak Telugu and this guy wrote this play, which is kind of considered like the most prominent Telugu play in all of Indian history. Otherwise they're famous for the Kuchipudi dance, one of the eight classical styles of Indian dance. Ooh. And uh, yeah, they have great beaches and caves. Arunachal Pradesh, capital, Itangar. This is the region that's kind of disputed with China, although it is administered by India. In order to get in as a foreigner, you will need a restricted area permit. Otherwise, culturally, it kind of takes cues from Tibet, you know, the whole like Buddhism thing going on. There's quite a few Buddhists here. People here are super friendly. They're famous for their wood carvings and their carpets. Assam, capital, Dispur. Now, if you watch the India episode, you'll know that I talked about the seven sisters in Northeast India. Assam is kind of like the big sister. This place is known for disputably having the nicest tea and silk. And the silks are kind of made based off of what they actually feed the silkworms. It's interesting. They're also known for preserving the incredibly rare one-horned Indian rhinoceros and uh, the longest bridge opened up in 2017 over here as well. Ooh. Assam. It's awesome. Bihar. <laughs> capital Patna. This is kind of like the Buddha state. Lots of famous sites for Buddhism. Supposedly they have the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Gautama sat under. Otherwise on the Hindu side I was told that they're very big on Ram and Krishna. I was also told that they're very hard-working people. Chhattisgarh. Capital Naya Raipur. From what I was told this is kind of like a a somewhat militant-ish type of area. They're known for producing a lot of coal and they are kind of one of the poorest states. And there really? is a noticeable community of people that kind of have Maoist slash Naxal ideologies and it kind of clashes with the main Indian government. But otherwise, generally the people here are just nice, but there's just a little bit of controversy, that's all. Goa, this is the Vegas of India. It was a former Portuguese colony and uh, now it's known for having a ton of Russian tourists that just flock over and take over everything. Great beaches, <laughs> bars, and cool things happening. But the funny thing is the people in Goa, like the actual citizens, are pretty chill and normal. It's just the tourists that give it the crazy vibe. But yeah, Goa, it's like where everybody wants to go to for a vacation. You want to go uh, go. Go. Right. Gujarat, capital <laughs> Gandhinagar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is from here. Now this place is famous for a few nice. things. First of all, it's kind of like a desert and they have one of the largest salt deserts in the world. They have this forest which has the last of the Asiatic lions in the world. Oh, I forgot Gandhi was also from here. They are voted the number one ease of business state in India. The people here are very good at doing business and they're really good at trading. Wow. Also, no alcohol is allowed in this state, but that's okay because they go to one of the union territories that we'll talk about later. But yeah, basically, uh, people that can handle money really well come from Gujarat. Haryana, capital Chandigarh, which is shared with Punjab. Right. Long story. Haryana, I was told, is kind of like the rougher, tougher brother of Punjab. It's known as like the wrestling and boxing capital of India. And they have one of the highest male to female sex ratios, like there's more men than women. And this place is famous for having a lot of people what? that are hired to become bodyguards for other people in other states. Like this is the bodyguard state. Himachal Pradesh, which has two capitals. 
The summer one, Shimla, and the winter one, Darshala. <laughs> this is kind of known as the state that hosts the Dalai Lama. But it's actually kind of known as like the beautiful holiday destination that Indians love to visit. It's known as the abode of snow, one of the snowiest places in all of India. Culture-wise, again, they take a lot of cues from their Tibetan neighbors up north. But yeah, uh, cool state, lots of culture, lots of beautiful landscape. Uh, people like to visit for, for uh, vacation. Amazing. Jammu and Kashmir also has two capitals. The summer one, Srinagar, and the winter one, Jammu. I have to be very, very careful with this one. Why? Because if you watch the India episode, you'll know that Pakistan and China and India are all kind of vying for ownership of this one area. Basically, the area that is kind of operated by India, we'll talk about. Besides Lakshadweep, it has the highest percentage of Muslims in all of India at about 68%. It used to be ruled under these princely states. And it's funny because like the people here are so nice and welcoming, even though they've gone through like multiple wars. But yeah, it's like the world's most beautiful conflict zone. Jharkhand, capital zone. Ranchi. It's kind of like uh, the sibling of Chhattisgarh. A lot of the people here kind of also have the same Maoist ideology. However, it also does have one of the holiest sites in Jainism. Well, how do you pronounce it? Shik the Shikharji, Shikharji, known for having a lot of minerals that they mine. And uh, famous cricketer Dhoni came from here as well. Oh. Karnataka, capital Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore. The capital, Bengaluru, is kind of known as like the Silicon Valley of India. So many IT companies and startups are coming out in this city. And they have the lowest unemployment rate in all of India oh. at less than 1%. Ooh. Otherwise, they're known for having the Hampi ruins. And uh, they speak Kannada, or uh, is that how you pronounce I was told it's pronounced Kannada, but some people have said Canada, like what is it? Kerala, capital, <laughs> Tiruvananthapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. Say that three times fast. Tiruvanantapuram. Tiruvanantapuram. This place is kind of famous for being known as the spot where Jesus' apostle Thomas kind of landed and spread the Christian gospel. And today uh, you see kind of like a lot of Catholics and Christians and they all kind of speak Malayalam. A little bit of a tongue twister. Say it with Malayalam. me. Malayalam. It's not Malayam or Malayam. It's Malayalam. Backwater is a very famous place. And yeah, Kerala is kind of like the state that's like doing pretty well overall in a lot of things. Things like literacy and HDI and all that other stuff. All the other states are like, hmm, maybe we can kind of take pointers from Kerala. Madhya Pradesh, capital Bhopal, the heart of India, the history state with tons of religious and historical sites. You have the Bimbetka rock shelters. You have the uh, Kajuraho temples, which kind of depicts all those, uh, you know, Kama Sutra sexually explicit Ooh. images going on. A lot of you have told me to mention the Bhopal gas tragedy that happened in 1984. And I was also told that the people here seem to be really big devotees of Ganesh. Ganesh. Maharashtra, capital Mumbai. This is the richest state and the second most populous, third largest in area. It's kind of like the New York and Los Angeles of India. It's like the economic hub and the entertainment hub. Bollywood is over here. Tons of people flock over to pursue their dreams. I mean, aside from all that though, they do have a lot of like Marathi forts and like historical sites as well. But yeah, Maharashtra is kind of like the central nucleus that everything kind of builds off of and expands outwards from. It pushes nice, India forward. Nice. Manipur, capital Impal. This is one of the seven sister states. A lot of the people here, just like all the other seven sisters, have a little bit more of like an East Asian look to them. They're known for having their own distinct hill tribes. Five-time world amateur boxing champion Mary Kom came from here. They're also known for having these cool floating islands. Floating islands and boxing women. Meghalaya, capital Shillong. This place is known as the abode of rain and they're kind of like the water people of India. These two villages get the most rain in all of India. They have really interesting matrilineal tribes and they have really cool foggy hills. But yeah, cool hill people with their own customs and uh, the water people. Mizoram, capital nice. Aizam, nice. the land of blue mountains. This is the most forested state in all of India at over 90%. Pretty eco-friendly. They even have eco tours. It's kind of like the Costa Rica of India. The people here are just really chill and they just kind of like sell their handicrafts at the market. All right, so that's the halfway point just very quickly before we move on to the next one just want to say thank you to Cetera our sponsor for this video. Cetera is a really cool geography learning game that you can actually download on Android or iOS at this link right here or you can just go to the website and play. There are tons of games you can choose from here you got a lot of things like regions, physical landscapes, capitals, you can even custom create your own game and they actually made a geography now game. Not only that but the game also comes in 34 different languages. It's really fun I totally recommend you guys check it out go to online.cetera.com
Nagaland, capital Kohima. This is like the most Christian state of India, but they also still kind of retain their own indigenous tribal cultures and customs, famous for the Hornbill Festival. And it's funny because like, they're very westernized, but they know that the tourists come in and so they kind of have to like put on their traditional costumes and put on a show. <laughs> but it's like, hey, eh, whatever, eh, whatever makes us money. Odisha, formerly known as Orissa, capital Bhubaneswar, known as the land of cyclones. It's also known for being like the ISRO's launch site for their satellite programs. This is one of the three states that never broke up throughout all of Indian statehood history. It's kind of known as like the state that bridges the north and south. They speak the Oriya language. They have an amazing wetland and mangrove park where you can find like tigers and elephants. Probably the most famous landmark being the Sun Temple of Konark, nice. Punjab, capital nice. Chandigarh, shared with Haryana. Keep in mind, this is only part of the larger Punjab territory, which is also shared with Pakistan. A lot of you guys had stuff to say about Punjab. Overall, a a lot of you said that Punjab is probably the most loved state in India, partially thanks to Bollywood. They got really good food, really nice people. They have the largest Sikh community in all of India. They also have the holiest site in Sikhism, the Golden Temple. And there's a ton of forts and palaces like this one. Rajasthan, capital Jaipur. Nice. The land of Rajas or kings. Land of kings. The largest state in area at 341 square kilometers. It is also one of the states that never broke up. And there are just endless forts and palaces found in this state. It has things like a camel fair. Supposedly, I was told they have like the best henna artists. Keep in mind, food-wise, they keep things very spicy and it is, at about 75% of the population, the most vegetarian state in Ooh. India. Vegetarian kings in the sand. Sikkim, capital Gangtok. Now this is an interesting one because it kind of joined India in 1975 to kind of avoid the Chinese. It used to be its own kingdom and these people are very similar to the people of Bhutan. They can kind of generally understand each other's languages. Lots of uh, Tibetan Buddhist type of culture going on here as well. And it is as of right now the most environmentally friendly state in all of India. Nice. It is almost completely organic. As in they don't believe in using chemicals or pesticides in their agriculture. Very clean air, they love nature, and they love, uh, they're just, it's, it's kind of like the Bhutan of India. Tamil Nadu, capital Chennai. Now, if you want real, like, South Dravidian Indian culture, you come here. This is, like, straight up the southern capital of India. The main language they speak, Tamil. of course, is Tamil, which is completely unintelligible to Hindi. They have so many temples, including the largest functioning Hindu temple in the world. Technically, Angkor Wat is a bigger Hindu temple, but it's no longer active, so it kind of doesn't count. Uh, I was told they are big fans of Rajnik Ant. Telangana, capital Hyderabad, the youngest state of India. They literally split up from Andhra Pradesh in 2014. I was told mm. it's kind of like the whole, you know, Catalina Spain thing where they're like, hey, we're making a lot of money, but you guys are dragging us down. So we're going to kind of split off and make our own thing. And then Andhra Pradesh was like, no, you can't do that. And they're like, yes, we can. And we're going to take Hyderabad. They're like, no, you can't <laughs> do that. And like, yes, we can make your own capital. Yeah, messy divorce. Anyway, they're also oh, famous man. for Tollywood or Telugu. Hollywood and it's interesting because they still kind of retain a little bit of the Persian culture that was brought over from the Mughals and Nizams. You can find it in things like the painting and their shadow puppets. Tripura, capital Agartala. I was told, is this even India? It's like the state that very few people even know much about. It's like all sides of their state are surrounded by Bangladesh. So no shocker, they have a lot of Bangladeshi immigrants. Uh, apparently I was told they like to play horse polo. But yeah, uh, I think out of all the states, uh, they are kind of like the biggest anomaly. Right. Right. Like the mystery state. Agreed. People probably come here to hide out and avoid the authorities when they're on the loose. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Just... Uttar Pradesh, capital <laughs> Lucknow. This is the Taj Mahal state. Yo. And it's kind of like a, oh dang, where did that baby boom come from? You guys just like exploded in population in the past That's few years. That's my state. And now it is the most populous state. It's also home to Varanasi, one of the most famous cities in the world for Hinduism, Jains, and Buddhists. And uh, yeah, a lot of fertile land over here. Lots of spices and agriculture happen in this Facts. state. It's very key, important player in all Thanks. of India. You cannot have India without Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand, capital Dehradun. This place actually has some of the holiest sites in all of Hinduism. It has the Jim Corbett National Park, beautiful mountains. Again, I was told these people are super nice, very welcoming. And I was specifically told to tell you guys that Urvashi Ratala is from this state. West Bengal, capital Calcutta, or Kolkata. They changed the spelling. This is the last state that never broke up in all of India. Technically, if you consider the fact that it broke up from East Bengal, which became in Bangladesh, but yeah. These people are kind of also known for having some of the best sweets in all of India. And they're also known for having some of the best literature and academics. Some of the greatest minds from India, like this guy came from here. They're also known for being very strong devotees to Durga. Durga. Sweets and academics, West Bengal. 
all. Now we reach the Union Territories, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, capital Port Blair. This place is known for being home to one of the last uncontacted human tribes on Earth, the Sentinelese. You are not allowed to visit their island. It's also home to India's only volcano, Chandigarh. Now this is interesting. It's the capital of both Punjab and Haryana, but it's also a Union Territory in itself. Basically, this was a planned city that was built because they gave Lahore to Pakistan. And it was kind of made to be like a model of affordable housing in India. It's a, it's a new city. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. There's the interesting thing. Gujarat, like I mentioned, does not allow alcohol. Maharashtra does. So where do they meet in the middle? These Union Territories. These places are kind of known as like the places where both states can kind of join together and have a beer. And uh, Daman and Diu, I think it was also Portuguese, wasn't it? Yeah. Lakshadweep means a hundred islands. Basically, in a nutshell, the majority of people here are Muslim and they're very similar to the people of the Maldives. So you find a lot of atolls and a lot of people living on these narrow sand banks and they have like an island culture. The capital territory of Delhi. Right. Keep in mind, this is a separate entity from New Delhi. But yeah, uh, this is kind of basically where all the politicians go and the worst drivers in India, I was supposedly told. And even the though they are a territory, they still have their own legislative assembly. It's, it's weird. But yeah, busy people making laws, causing controversy for the rest of the country. And finally, Puducherry, capital Pondicherry. This is the French speaking area of India. And here you can also find Auroville, the hippie village where all the people kind of came together and they wanted to make their own utopia. But then there was a little bit of controversy, but yeah, it's, yeah, look into it. But yeah, French speaking Indians. And that is that. Once again, thank you to you guys all. Beautiful video, man. 100%. Loved it. It was long, but I think it was worth it. I think it was worth it. Wow. I mean, India is a lot of uh, states. So, uh, all in all, firstly, you tell me, where are you watching this from? Which states? Which state are you from? Me, I'm from Uttar Pradesh, as you said. If you reached here, which means you know. Like you saw, I was all hell, you know, I was all gas and I was happy when mine came out. So India is 28 states. Oh my God, that's a lot. 28 states all together, right? And um, so just tell me in the comment section, where, which state are you from? Which state are you from? Uh, where are you watching from? You can say Uttar Pradesh, Noida, something like that. That's where I am, so that's why I said that. Amazing, but that was really amazing. I loved you 100%. Uh, the explanation was good. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't really like um, get everything like 100%, like retain everything, but at least you'd have like, you know, knowledge and information about what exactly is going on. You know, like, you know, you have to know the, the eastern side, the side. Now we know that from the, the eastern side of India, mostly, you know, they, you know, they tend difference you know the difference you can clearly see it okay you know but um it's one india you know one love they come together there's unity and all that that's what we love and um so there are 28 states and eight union territories in the country that's why india is so big man it's huge you know if you go they say if you go what is it 10 kilometers or 100 kilometers in any direction you find different things in india that's how India is. That's how diverse India is. Much love to you guys. I appreciate you all. Uh, you know, subscribe down below. Tell me what you think. Give me more videos to react. And I will see you next time. Take care. Peace.